Hello, welcome to the video. In today's video we're going to talk about heat sinks. I'll present to you the Junker from episode 1. This particular piece of shit has uh, been cooking its tits off with the Kung Fu Flash cartridge playing whiz ball in the background for the last three quarters of an hour. Uh, actually it's probably closer, it's an hour. So, inside here we've got a cage for the Vic 2 and we're going to run some tests with the cage, without the cage and with a, a bonded heatsink to it to see what is the actual difference. I'm going to use a, a rather nice thermal camera that I borrowed and we're going to actually see what the hell is going on. So, a little bit of the science bit. How does a heat sink work? Well, what it does is it takes a temperature difference from what you've got to what you want. So what that means is, if you've got, um, let's just say, a chip here. Look at that, shit drawing time. The heat will just be dissipate into the air and it will be the area of the chip that's dissipate into the atmosphere or to the local atmosphere it is and that's going to be dependent on the temperature so what will happen is this will get to a certain temperature and then it's dependent on the air around it now the actual equation for it um, is quite simple in, re in reality um, you need to know a lot of other stuff and it gets a, a little bit complicated but basically what it's saying is the temperature you've got and the temperature you want is dependent on how much resistance you've got between them. Now you might have seen heat sinks, um, they come with a rating of uh, Celsius per watt. The lower the value, the better it conducts um, heat to the atmosphere. And this is called thermal resist resistivity. I'll get that out in a minute. Now this thermal resistance means that you want to get as much heat away from your chip and into the atmosphere as good as possible, as fast as possible. So the, the, the equation for it, and the simplest one, is your resistance is uh, delta T over uh, watts. Yeah. So this is how many watts you're generating, and this is the difference in temperature. And difference in temperature is basically what you've got, what you want, and one minus the other. Um, it's really, really that simple. And none of this is, is I, I only give you this for information. Um, once you start adding compound things to it, um, this equation gets a bit more convoluted. But that's, this is basically it. To define the resistance of any material is the temperature difference divided by how much heat you're generating. And this is a ratio. And this is also why, um, obviously in colder temperatures, you can actually get a better... Uh, temperature on your chip so if you're in the Sahara Desert you're going to be cooking the tits out of anything before you even use a heat sink so and that's the difference so now that we know what this is how does that affect us with a Commodore well let's get his shit out of the way with a Commodore let's take this piece of shit bread bin here so the Junker We'll lift the lid up and we can see here it's still running we can see here that we've got a metal can over the top of this um, this metal can acts uh, as a heat sink when I take this off later on you'll, you'll see why but there's a piece of copper behind it which has a lower Celsius per watt than the, the steel casing so that transfers the heat to the casing now we'll fire this up and uh, I'll capture it on OBS so you can see as well. We'll be able to see what is um, generating all the heat inside the Commodore. So let's just 
plug that in. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes, look at this. You can see we've got a couple of a couple of hot spots around the regulators there, and that's to be expected. Um, you can see where the power comes in, actually. It's, it's heating up. It's heating up the board over here. I'm pointing to it, thinking you can see it's a thermal camera. <laughs> There's my hand. So, yeah, I mean, right there is where the power's coming in. Look at that. 40 degrees odd. Oh, yeah, well. So, we can see here, oh, look at that. We see which chips are generating all the heat. Clearly, the SID is cooking its tits off more than the rest. You can also see that some of the chips are um, just to die inside the chip is generating the heat and the actual epoxy casing is not conducting a lot of it so what I'm going to do is just give me a second to click start record on OBS there we go I'll overlay some of this into the video so what we've got is this Vic here and apparently it's running at 30 degrees look at that whereas the SID chip over here is at well that's 50 55 56 degrees um, CPU what are we cooking at there about the same but it's localized to the middle of the chip the SID is seemingly um, the whole case is, um, yeah, the whole case is conducting heat. So, what that's, what this is telling me here is the SID itself. Yeah, that's a little bit warm. Um, that could do with a heat sink. The CIA chips, what are they, what are they roughly cooking at here? Uh, yeah. Well, they're all about the same temperature, which is weird. Apart from the PLA, the PLA is not really. Let's have a look, see if I can get that spot on in the middle. Yeah, so the PLA is about 10 degrees um, cooler. Yeah. Well, look at that. That bridge rectifier there is cooking its tits off. But anyway, I digress. This is what we're interested in in this video. We're going to be, firstly doing it with the cage on. I shall do another piece of video and show you with the cage off and just the chip heating up. And then we're gonna use thermal epoxy and bond a heat sink permanently to the chip and see what that gives us. But we can see here that straight away off the bat, we've got some good candidates. Yeah, we've got good candidates to, um, heatsink as standard and that's the CPU, the SID, both CIAs and the PLA although the PLA is not so bad and neither is the RAM looking at it yeah the RAM's only yeah 43 degrees so yeah I, I wouldn't bother about the RAM lovely so let's turn this off for a second And uh, I knew this was going to happen. Let's just prise off. Look at that. Come on. Now, this cage serves two purposes. One of it was to keep the Vic cool, but that wasn't its design function. It was actually to... Uh, stop the um, electromagnetic interference to cut some of that down so on the back here you can see here's some thermal compound a copper strip and that conducts the heat to the case here and you can see I've got a, a ceramic in there I don't particularly like these very much because they've got shit video quality but we're going to get to that in another video so what we're going to do now is turn this bad boy back on and that's going to sit there playing Playing whiz ball in the background. Holy fucking shit. Straight away you can see how hot this is. Yeah, that's... 
that's properly cooking already well 57 degrees I think the Vic's probably the hottest thing on the board so never mind what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this to uh, cook for a bit and uh, yeah we'll pick it up from there right so here we are back again this has only been running for maybe 20 minutes since I shot the last piece of video um, the reason for that is I don't really want to blow the arsehole out of this Vic chip so let's have a look and uh, see what we're getting now here we go again now parts it's hard to see because there's a bit of thermal compound on there that's blocking the heat a bit as you can see but the highest temperature recorded on the scale is 64.7 so that's definitely running a bit hotter than it did without the shield on so let's get that out of the way let's turn this off now it'll start to cool down fairly quickly I suspect yeah so if you're like me and you don't bother about the bloody shields on these things um, I tend to heat sink my chips but I've never done the, the actual um, test to see you know is it better to leave it in there or not effectively once you've got this can on you, you're heating up the whole board there anyway so you do yeah still once you're in a bread bin I suppose it's mostly enclosed um, there's a few vents on it but it's still gonna still gonna get a bit toasty so what we're saying is that without this shield on it definitely definitely is warmer yeah that's not a shocker and that goes back to the equation uh, Delta T and that's the uh, the difference in temperature between the ambient and what's generating it so we can see there that because we've got less thermal resistivity between that and the air it's able to conduct the heat away to the air and thus lower the temperature yeah, fuck uses thus in a sentence anyway we all know this there's, there's, there's no real surprises there uh, you know you learn this kind of shit at school so the real question is is can I bond a, a heat sink to that and improve on this cool is that yeah well we're down to 47 40, yeah 47 degrees even though the scale is the same you can see that it, it's determined the color change is determined by the maximum temperature ambient around 25 degrees yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to bond a heat sink now to that end you can buy this stuff from eBay, AliExpress, and you buy it in strips 200 mil long, 250 mil long. I cut it down, um, ready to bond to chips. It's the right width, I think it's 22.5. I think that one's probably a bit long. I've got a few already cut down, you see, so let's see if we can't. That's not a bad size fit. How about that one? Oh, is that excellent so all I do is I cut it down um, I bevel off the the ends because it can be quite sharp after you cut it and you don't want any burrs sticking downwards and then yeah you can just make heat sinks to whatever size you want and then what do you do it's not thermal compound I'm going to be using it's actual two-part thermal epoxy as you can see here this is thermal adhesive it's not the same as thermal compound and I 3d printed let's put these two bits down there I 3d printed some clamps all right there's nothing funky here it's a m3 bolt a couple of washers and two pieces here and what happens is 
I'm sure you can work this out. The legs sit either side of this and it puts some pressure onto the chip while it's, uh, while it's going off. And trust me, it does not take long to go off with this stuff. Now I made some different lengths because obviously you want to get the right length. So for this chip, that's the right length one. Why is half of it in white? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I printed the first ones in PLA and they bloody cracked. So, Pet G is the order of the day with this. Yeah, so there we go. So once this is cool, like it is now, we're going to clean it up. We're going to put some um, contact cleaner on. Get rid of all that shit on the top of it. We're going to clean up the heat sink and we're going to bond it. And I don't believe it. I had that next to me. Right, so here we are back again. Two pieces of tissue. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean up the heat sink. We don't need that anymore, so let's just. Shut down OBS. Lovely. Right. Little tiny bit on there. Um, it's just to get rid of the shit off the back of here, really. There we go. Just like that. And then we're going to clean the top of the chip. It's going to be easier to do it in situ. Look at that, look at that, look at the shit there. Okay, we'll use the second piece. This is going to be a new one on me because I've never tried bonding a heatsink to a ceramic chip. And the reason for that is there's a, um, a raised die in the middle. Which means I'm not going to get a uniform sort of adhesion across it. Right. Now we need to get that chip out. And a bit of bloody tissue there. That's it. So what I'm using here is a chip lifter by Wera. And I think where I make the best screwdrivers. So let's just coax this out of the socket, maybe. There we go. Look at that. A Moz R3. Wow, look at that. Lovely. So, undo this ready. Just like that. Put those down there. Take that bit off. We're going to be placing that there. It's a little bit fiddly, but let's just. Move that back a bit. Put that down there for the time being. Right. Old bit of milk carton. Now, we should have... Oh, there we are. A little tiny mixer. Need that. Now we don't have much time with this, so I'll do this as I go. It's a one-to-one -one mix generally. He says as it's bloody welded on. It's always the way. Ah, Use power pliers on that. Come okay, on, that's better. Yeah, it's damn good stuff. It's also, you know, for what it is. I'm going to use like a grain of rice sort of size there. 
and just pull the plunger back slightly. Same with part B. If you don't pull the plunger back slightly, this is what happens and you end up using a, a pliers to get it off. Okay. Now this one can go off on its own, so yeah, that's what I thought. Sometimes you need to uh, coax it out. I'm just going to use a old screwdriver there. See if I can't get past a lot of it. There we go. Yeah, it goes off a bit inside the tube. You're not you're not going to get around that. That's um that's the nature of it, I'm afraid. And this one appears to have gone off a lot in the tube. Still, there we go. Come on. Well, so much for doing this live on camera. Come on. We'll get there in a minute bit more crumbly I think it's got some of the old shit in there we go that's better there we go and I do that and you don't have much time once you uh, once you sort this out once you mix it together yeah you better be ready so that's gonna go on like that what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move this crumbly shit out of the way, yeah, and that bit there. I don't want that there. Nice, and then I'm going to mix this together, and that's it. So we take our Vic chip and we scoop a big dollop of this on it, like this. all up and down the chip and normally I would only use a very very thin amount but because the center of this is raised as you can see on the video here I'm uh, gonna put a bit more like this just so it fills in the voids better this is not an ideal chip to be doing this to purely because the center is raised so yeah, plenty of plenty of gunk either side. Just look at that. All of it needs to be left on the chip there. Right. Okay. So what we're gonna do then. Take that a little bit off there, it's fell off. Put it on that side, there we go. Yum, 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 yum. Is we're gonna bond that to that, just like that. And it's gonna slide all over the place here. So, what we need to do is get it in the clamp and get it centralized. And this is why I designed the clamps. And yeah, I bonded a few of these to chips, so. Put that in there, both sides. And it's captive then. And we line up the chip. Line up the heat sink. Put a little bit of pressure on to begin with. We certainly don't want to be wringing the arsehole out of it, either breaking the chip or breaking the clamp. But just enough pressure so that we can drop the wing nut. We can manoeuvre the chip still. Right, so we do that. Do that, looks fairly central. I'm going to just 
poke that chip down a bit. There we go. Look at that. Um, yeah. Some of it's going to squirt out the side a bit. I'm not worried about that. Not in the slightest. And now we tighten it up. Like I said, don't go fucking mad and end up breaking a chip. You can see it's already bending the plastic. It's better to bend the plastic than the chip. And something just clicked. If that has broken the chip, then uh, this video is going to end there, really. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Lovely. Yep. I don't like the look at that. I just hope it hasn't broken the chip. I guess we'll see shortly. So now all I've got to do is leave it to dry. It's apparently a five minute job, but I'll leave it a bit longer than that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so here we are back again. Um, yeah, as suspected, that little crack I heard was in fact the ceramic chip cracking right across there. So I'm a bit pissed off about that. Um, but in all fairness, it had shit video quality anyway, so fuck it. However, I had another R3 Vic 2. This one's in a more sensible plastic packaging. So let's just take this out of the clamp. There we go. Sorted. I can't believe that. I'm really pissed off. I quit. I didn't even do it up tight. So, warning to everyone: don't fucking try this shit with a ceramic chip. Okay. So in the plastic packaging, you can see that you clamp it down, it spills out the side. That's really no issue because you're trying to conduct heat away, so that's not a problem. So we're just going to pop that inside here. There we go. And fire this bad boy up. I don't know if you can hear that, but... Yep, whiz ball's running. Hasn't done much to improve the video quality because it's still an R3. But in a later video, we're going to rip this fucker out and uh, change that, turn that back down. We're gonna change that back to a, um, a more sensible regular, uh, I'll get it right in a minute. Modulator even. So I've made some very nice ones up that I've used in the C128s. But anyway, that's for another video. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave this cooking its tits off and uh, we'll revisit it when it's uh, warmed up and see if there's any improvement. Right, here we are back, and uh, <laughs> the, the non-dead uh, R3 has been running for a little bit. So, let's see. How hot did this fucker get? Here we go again. Well, look at that. I mean... That's, that's a hell of a difference. Hell of a difference. That's actually still running now. And it's 30 degrees odd. Holy shit. And just as a little, you can see how hot it's, you know. That's the Sid there. And that's the Vic with the heat sink on. So quite quite obviously, the the way forward is uh, bond a bloody heatsink to it. Let's shut this down. Well, there we go. I can turn this off now. So what do we get from this video? Well, don't do stupid things like bonding heatsinks to fucking ceramic chips. That's the first thing. That really pissed me off. 
Um, now, I've already bonded lots and lots of my um, chips with these heat sinks. I've done it in my 1 to 8 Neo that I made. Um, a lot of my other 64s have got this in the standard. So I already knew the answer to the question before I started. I've just videoed it to present it. So, I personally tend to heat sink the VIC, the SID, the two CIAs and the CPU. I don't generally do the PLAs um, and that's because they're easy enough to replace. The others are not um, as like this. But this, this is an old junk machine anyway, but um, the, R, the R3s didn't have very good video quality at all. Not, not in the slightest. Um, but like I said, we're going to come to that in the next video where we rip the fucking modulator out and we put a nice modern replacement in. And I've used them many times, so I know what the answer is going to be. But you'll be able to see the difference. I'll put it through a capture card and uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty good. Normally we can take about 10 degrees off uh, a chip just by heat sinking it, which is quite quite a lot, really. Um, I advise you to do it if you're capable. If you're not or you're not that way inclined, get someone else to do it. Um, you know, if that's what you want to do. If you're the sort of person that recaps a machine, then this should be your next port of call afterwards. This, this one isn't recapped, but most of my other ones are. So, yeah. I just want to say that, on a, on a last note, although there's not much heat difference between um, the casing and the bonded heatsink, the difference lies in that it doesn't heat up this whole area of the board, which this will do. Um, Temperature-wise, they, they're going to be, you know, pretty close between this and this but if you do go into a 64 please do put some new thermal compound on if you know you're going to continue to use the the case personally i do like changing them out for heat sinks and i do that as a matter of course but some people like things as close to stock as possible and uh yeah that's uh that's pretty much it um, there's not a lot else to say. Check out 8-Bit Retro Refix. Um, it's got some good stuff going on over there. And um, thanks for watching.